Hello. Yeah, I would like to tell a story about the future. So my story is about the Internet of Things, but it's actually from a, a designer's perspective and from a user's perspective. That's because I'm a designer, but I'm also a user. So what is the Internet of Things? We're actually at a point now where the Internet is evolving. We're seeing a shift from connectivity, any time, any place, for anyone, which we're all experiencing now, to also include anything. Things are getting connected to the Internet. Now, we've been talking about this for a number of years now, and I have to admit, I've been asking, what exactly is this Internet of Things? When is it going to happen? And what is it actually going to mean for me? And what is it going to mean for you? Now, there's a number of companies that are busy with this. Intel predicts 31 billion things are going to be connected to the Internet by 2020. According to Cisco, it could be as many as 50 billion things. And IBM, according to them, in effect, the planet has grown a central nervous system. And this introduces a very important aspect about the Internet of Things. It's not just the things that are connected to the Internet. It's actually the data that they're creating and communicating with each other and communicating with us that's going to enable us to do some really interesting things with the Internet of Things. So I had a look around my home, because the Internet of Things is apparently here already. And I have this camera, and I also have this energy monitor attached to the Internet. But I have to admit, a few months after I connected them, they actually lost their connection to the Internet. And they're actually still sitting there waiting for me to reconnect them. So it's not really very useful. This is one thing, though, that I would really love to have. These are LED colored light bulbs that you can actually control with your iPhone anywhere that you are. There's a number of different settings and controls that you can do, but it's up to you how you actually control them, which for me introduces another aspect. We've got the things, we've got the data, but it's about the people. What are the people going to be doing with this Internet of Things? And this is, for me, a very important point. And I think that in order for the Internet of Things to really be relevant for all of us, we need to actually change the way that we think. And we also need to change the way that we create. If we're going to design this Internet of Things for people. And one way that we can do this is using something that I call open tools. So rather than having this energy monitor, this camera, or the light bulbs, discrete individual products. Instead, we have a range of tools that communicate to each other. But they're also open so that people themselves can create what they want to do with them. And then I think what we're going to see is some very interesting applications that none of us can even imagine at the moment if we let the people be creative. And this is actually already happening. It's amazing if you look on the internet how many software and hardware there is now available for people to be creative with. So you can actually store and exchange your data already. There's a number of sensors. And there's also hardware that you can use to create your own applications connected to the internet. And there's some very creative people doing stuff with this. You're probably aware of the quantified self movement. If not, these are people who are using technology to monitor their bodies. So for example, sleep patterns, uh, blood pressure, weight, temperature, many different things about their personal body. And they're using this to actually learn about their health and well-being. There's also some fun application. There's a lot of people actually looking at putting this technology into clothing and connecting it to the internet. And here's a, a quick example. OK, cool. Hi, I'm Ryan from Cute Circuit. We make interactive clothing, gowns that light up red carpets, shirts that hug you via text. Valentine's approached us to work in partnership with them on creating a new way to leave an impression. The idea is to innovate the t-shirt, the original canvas of personal expression, by connecting it to the internet. It's called T-Shirt OS. The first wearable, shareable, programmable t-shirt, 100% cotton platform for digital creativity. The t-shirt has always been about leaving an impression, a creative canvas, the status update before the status update existed. 
the original like button. Our goal is to develop the world's first commercially available digital t-shirt, put it in your hands and over your bodies so you can go out there and leave an impression. If we can do it, would you want one? It's loaded with apps and tools. As big an LED screen as we can get, camera, microphone, accelerometer, and sound. All controlled from a big brain in the phone via a small brain in the t-shirt. Connect that to the internet and we have t-shirt OS. Now imagine what you might start to do if your clothes were connected to the internet. And what I'd like to do now is sort of close on a couple of scenarios, just imagining what this future internet could actually be for us. So my first example, imagine the shoe shop of the future. Now, a technology that I really like is 3D printing. I don't know if you know, but you can actually now buy a 3D printer for the home, although the quality is a little bit questionable. But Shapeways, a Dutch company, has just opened the future factory in New York, Long Island, New York. They plan to install 50 3D printers where consumers can print up to 50 million objects a year. And these are examples of shoes that have been printed with 3D printer. So imagine, you go into my shoe shop, you no longer have to try on the shoes, because a 3D scan of your foot means that they will fit exactly. What if they were actually printed with local materials? This could actually be more sustainable. No more shipping products around the world. What if these materials could be developed to be biodegradable, recyclable, or even reprintable? But what if, when your shoe is being printed, you can actually choose the height of the heel, or the color, or even put a little special detail, put something in there, a message for a friend as a gift. And maybe you can also print in electronics, conductive thread and sensors. And you could also start measuring your weight, your temperature, other things about your movement, how fast are you walking, how often are you walking, are you sitting too long, for your private use, but you can actually start monitoring yourself. Could this actually be the future of healthcare? Self-monitoring, preventative monitoring. But also what you could do is you could connect this up to your accessories. So you could actually start printing matching clothes, bags, jewelry. What would you like? So that's one example. Now I'd like to move to a bigger area, the public space. Working on a project in Eindhoven, we're installing a sensor network. The first thing we're connecting to the sensor network is intelligent lighting. LED lighting that can be any color that you want. But what we also want to do is we want to challenge the way that people think about lighting. What if the lighting was no longer attached to the lamppost, but it could actually fly around? What might you do with that? What if you could actually control it? Now, the technology is in early stages of development, but this, was a, this YouTube clip is a demonstration that was made this summer in Austria by Arts Electronica. Flying lights. Now, if you could control it, maybe you could help it to lead your direction somewhere or make you feel safer at night by having more lights lighting the area around you. But what if you were wearing my smart shoes and you also allowed that to communicate to this network? Maybe somebody could be walking along and they're about to have a heart attack. Could this system then send a message through to emergency services? But also, these lights could come over and start flashing and drawing attention so that you actually get help as soon as possible. So these are just some simple scenarios about what you might do if you start connecting more things together. But what I'm hoping that we can do is by these open systems that we can actually start people, enable people like you to create the Internet of Things. Thank you.